So, uh, there's become something of a, uh, a new tradition coming about in Britain these over these recent years, which is every six months or so, Morrissey will just... Famous British singer and cultural icon Morrissey will just pop out an interview and just sort of leave some incredibly base comments there for the commentariat to, you know, just talk Mold about. Over. Yeah, just see it. And, uh, well, the mad lad's done it again, uh, which I'm thrilled to say. But um, either of you two just sort of familiar with Morrissey's prior comments or his music? Or... I, I'm familiar with his political opinions. I'm not familiar with his music. I was never a fan of the Smiths. Fair enough. Uh, yeah. It's not that it's bad or anything like that, just not for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, I, I just approve of him uh, opening his mouth. Really I was up. never a massive Smiths fan, although they've got half a dozen songs that are good, mm. but I don't know all their albums inside out or anything. But yeah, there's a few songs that are good. But it was a little bit before my time even, yeah, the Smiths, no. a tiny bit. It's more like early to mid 80s, isn't it really, the Smiths? Yeah. Um, and, uh, and his later music stuff, I don't really know at all. Uh, but yeah, the Smiths have got at least half a dozen sure. pretty damn good songs. Yes. Uh, but as for his political views, mm. They're brilliant. They're great. <laughs> they're great. But they're really based. What's not right? to love? Yeah. They're really based. Again, we were talking in a previous segment about how someone like Elon or Tucker mm. um, doesn't need to prove anything to anyone anymore. They've got enough money and enough mm. fame. They don't need any more of that. Yes. So they're truly free to say what they want within reason. Absolutely. Um, and I think Morris is one of those. You know, he's not really on a par with Tucker or <laughs> Elon, but nonetheless doesn't need any more money i would have thought yeah. doesn't need any more fame doesn't cover fame anymore the thing uh, is with with artists is that when when you have like artists who have like jk rowling is the best example of this where jk rowling has a nostalgia factor for millennials right millennials all grew up reading harry potter and they loved harry potter it was you know it was it was their tolkien you know it was, it was just something that made them feel safe and comfortable and loved and so they dive into the world of harry potter and just spend hours reading the books and then jk rowling comes out as a mega turf and they're <laughs> like oh my god this is the worst stab in the back i can ever imagine so until they kill that kind of cultural impact that jk rowling's had it doesn't really matter what she says or does because at the end of the day you still love the books you still love the books and you've got no choice you know Absolutely. and Mor morrissey's in that sort of position where it's like there are going to be um you know shit libs who grew up loving morrissey wearing you know, whatever the makeup was and the, you know, the, the fashion <laughs> and that was their childhood and they listen to the smith songs and they're back in in their you know in their teenage years and then he comes and says something <laughs> very base and they're like oh no a stab in the back is that kind of mm, feeling for right them. Yeah. Totally. Uh, before I continue the conversation, though, I should say it's the final week that it's your opportunity to buy issue two of Islander magazine. Uh, ah, yes, over here. It's uh, yet yeah, the last time in all of history that you can get a hand on <laughs> issue Luca's two. particular article about the Marshalls of Middle, Middle Earth. Faramir. Right. Do you like Tolkien? So, yes, and there's many other wonderful writers in there. I know Josh has written a poem for it, hasn't he? You've written a, yeah. another piece. And, yeah, you've got um, Rorreg's Nationalist and many, many great writers in it. So, yes, it's your last chance to uh, buy it this week. Morgoth, Stephen Molyneux. So right. Distributors. There's so many good, good, good articles on it. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so, actually, I'd like to come back to your prior point, Carl, about what you were saying about the shit lib sort of getting really angry about because i think in here there is a sort of misunderstanding amongst those who were his leftist fans mm -hmm. who always thought that morrissey was one thing but actually he was always our guy in a way right yeah. and and i think that the reason for this is because though uh, morrissey's uh, political views you know when he was in the 80s uh, most of the political things he talked about was his anti-monarchy uh, vegetarianism anti-thatcherism these are all very popular left-wing opinions but also from a cultural perspective he liked alan bennett plays and shakespeare and oscar wilde right and these sorts of cultural um, quirks as things that you would normally more associate with the middle classes than the working classes. But the thing is that Morrissey himself growing up lived a very working class life, growing up in working class post-industrial slump Manchester in the 1960s. And so you're looking at a man with very middle class interests 
but f but coming looking at the world from a very working class perspective and i think that what we're seeing now with many of the comments that morrissey has made recently is a bifurcation of the working class fans who have sort of taken on as a bit of a champion and the middle class fans and guardian readers who despise him with a passion mm. Yeah, the, I mean, the, the talk I gave at the Witan, metaphor and anti-metaphor, is, I think, very applicable to this. Because he's very, he's very much a metaphorical Englishman. Yeah. He's very much within the long continuum of our civilization. He loves it. He's very proud of Britain. And he, he is. He's very proud of everything we've achieved. And he, he clearly has a, a deep love of it. Mm. And, of course, the anti-metaphorical shitlibs uh, hate everything about us and therefore hate any champions of those things. Mm. And so that's why they hate Morrissey. Absolutely. That's one thing I noticed. I've seen Morrissey live at uh, Glastonbury. It was ever, either the very late nineties or the early two thousands at some point. Mm. And Morrissey was on, and his fans were chanting his name, but in a football chant way. Yeah, they do it. Every, yeah. <laughs> which is quite a yeah. working class thing to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, you wouldn't yeah. have middle class bourgeois people with their sandwiches and flasks oh. chanting like that. Yeah. And I know I've seen him on record saying he likes it. He likes that. Oh, yeah. Why wouldn't you? Well, yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Why wouldn't you? But it's in a baldy Morrissey. Yeah. Morrissey. It's, in, it's in a very, uh, yeah, a working class fashion. Right. Um, the other thing is, I don't know if you remember this, he used to be really close friends with Russell Brand. Do you remember yes, this? Did. Then they fell out. Oh, did they fall out? Well, they out? basically don't really right. do anything well, together anymore. Russell Brand became a very uh, left-wing person. Right. Mm. But yeah. Russell Brand's on a strange arc back towards the right now. So maybe, maybe. Uh, reconciliation. Yeah. But uh, the latest thing that Morrissey has done to champion the people of England is really this here, that uh, Morrissey claims release of new album gagged over song about the 2017 <clears throat> Manchester Arena bombing. Now, uh, I've heard him sing this song live, which is the only way you can access it right now because, as it says, it's not been published on the album. Yeah. And the name of it is right there, yes, Bonfire of the Teenagers which is, of course, a very provocative title. But, but the thing is, as well, with uh, when I saw him do this live, he said, nobody sings about England anymore, and essentially the plight of England, right? He, he realises that the English people have been left behind in their, in their own home. But also something as well that obviously, with it being in Manchester, and um, if I could ask someone to go to the next one, do I? So I'll do it. Oh, thank you. Um, this was the Facebook post that Morrissey wrote the day after the attack. And also, yes, May 22nd, which was the day of the terror attack, was also mo the day of Morrissey's birthday. And he was in Manchester at the time, so I'll just read a little bit of it. Celebrating my birthday in Manchester, as news of the Manchester Arena bomb broke, the anger is monumental. For what reason will this ever stop? Theresa May says that attacks will not break us, but her own life is lived in a bulletproof bubble, and she evidently does not need to identify any young people today in Manchester morgues. Also, will not break us means that the tragedy will not break her, or her policies on immigration. And so Morrissey just totally cuts the crap, right? And yeah. just says, no, the Manchester Arena bombing was a de direct result of the British government's continuous policy, immigration policies, right? If they hadn't have, um, continuously uh, continued them, then we wouldn't be in this state where we are now. And so, oh, but the guy was a British citizen, though, Luca, don't you know? The guy that did it was a British. Just a Welshman. He had, he, uh, he, he, had mm. a, he had a British passport. So what you're yes. saying doesn't make any sense, though. Yeah. Uh, Touche. But uh... yeah, no, it's it's nonsense. <laughs> it's nonsense. I'm playing the weirdo yeah. left, yeah. the weird <clears throat> leftist. Yes. Um, um, but Ofcom, Bo is our resident yeah. winger. That's what they were saying. <laughs> of course, Morrissey is right. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's the ultimate thing it's that science. we're not allowed any indignation, no. having your children blown up and burnt. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, a massacre of the innocents or yes. a bonfire of the teenagers. Yes. You're not allowed to really talk about it or, or remember it. Certainly not have any indignation. Don't look back in anger. Mm. No, men, true men like Morrissey say no to that. Yes. No, never. Yes, absolutely. Well, it, just so that uh, we and everyone who's listening are all on the same page, I've actually got here, if we go to the next one, the lyrics for the song. So... 
uh, the camera's a bit in the way. So, oh, thank you. Uh, bonfire with teenagers, which is so high in May, Northwest Sky. Oh, you should have seen her leave for the arena. On the way, she turned and waved and smiled goodbye, goodbye. And the silly people sing, don't look back in anger. And the morons sing and sway, don't look back in anger. I assure you that I will look back in anger till the day I die. And then there's chorus sort of repeats so i'll st oh but also the very end go easy on the killer obviously said with yeah. you know i said irony yeah. but yeah very powerful like a sledgehammer oh, yeah. of a song those lyrics really just because i've never actually heard the song but i wrote oh. an article a while ago saying <clears throat> it was called look back in anger <laughs> yeah and in that i wrote explicitly don't tell me not to look back in anger right yeah. I'm going to look back in anger. Mm. Don't tell me that. Um, and obviously, on Morrissey. me and Morrissey are on the same, Absolutely. same wavelength. So. Absolutely. Yeah. And also, yeah. whether Morrissey is aware of it or not, I thought that it would be an absolutely appropriate thing to just bring up as well, certainly something that Connor has you know, talked about at length, which is in his Tom Winston talks, how the government gaslights you, where he talks about this whole narrative of don't look back in anger is a pre-packaged plan yeah. concocted by the government, by uh, Raikou and the Prevent programs at the Home Office, who have a predetermined, no, in the event that some of these English children do happen to die at a pop concert, this is how we're going to handle the situation. Yeah. So they're, the, they're literally going to get the parents up to be like, don't be racist. Mm. Jesus Christ. But when it comes to talking about the legacy of colonialism or slavery, mm. then look back in anger. Right. Then do nothing but look back in anger. Yes. Okay. All right. Yes. Or you know, so yes, events that happened two hundred years ago get incredibly angry about, or foreign conflicts in Russia, Ukraine, or Israel, Palestine feel very strongly about them either way. But your own people, your own children, don't look back in anger. Well, a key pillar of Islam and to some lesser extent Judaism is looking back in anger. That's what there's a key element mm -hmm. to it. I mean, in Islam, they, they self-flagellate over, mm. over, uh, over killings and battles that happened centuries and centuries ago, looking back with sorrow and anger and regret and indignation and all sorts of emotions. Well, that's what the Sunni Shia splits is about. Isn't right. it? It's about the, mm. the political injustice that happened to Ali, the grandson of Muhammad. Brett Weinstein flipping off the, t the Arch of Titus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, but these are... Oh, he can look back in anger yeah, about these, that, can he? These are political right, okay. events from over a thousand years ago. But it's just, I don't know. Yeah, right. You despair for it. But uh, I've got some comments here that I, I did take out from uh, the interview that Morrissey gave. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that he said was, uh, the Manchester Arena bombing was our 9-11. But in this sad country of ours, of ours, to understand the full meaning of the attack is to be guilty. And this is why the don't look back in anger command always struck me as derisive and not at all words of social harmony. Uh, and then there was another quote where he said, controversial means intelligent, doesn't it? We're still in the grip of idiot culture. It's everywhere you look. Naturally, I'm one of the first to be gagged since my entire life has relied on free speech. No, I wouldn't remove the title song because I wouldn't abandon the murdered kids of Manchester. Their spirits cry out every single day for remembrance and recognition. Well done. Hear, hear. I've not, uh, this is all new to me. Yeah, I, uh, I so don't know. That's any... bloody brilliant. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, that's one of the, I thought it if was... I was a more emotional man, that would bring a tear to my eye. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's powerful stuff. And you can tell that, again, he is uncompromising mm -hmm. in it. You know, he could... I'm sure the rest of the album is very good. But no, he, this is what he, you know, as a man of principle, this is what he wants to stick his mass to. You know, this is where it all comes. So, yeah... If we go to the, the next one, thanks. Uh, yeah, one, just a quick thing to note as well. Morrissey, vocal, uh, yeah, defender of Tommy Robinson, yeah. says that he's been trekked shockingly uh, by the establishment. Obviously true. Yeah. Um, obviously true. Uh, and then here, I thought that we'd just go through the next piece. Thank you. I'm going to scroll down this and go through, <laughs> because this is Looks what warm I'm... in that arena. Is right. that what you're laughing at? <laughs> no. Oh. I was, I was really laughing at the headline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh... This, now, this to me really comes back to what I was saying at the beginning about how they never understood him. Yeah. Right. Because 
obviously, right, this is just some anarchist rag, okay? Never heard of it, but, you know, our enemies have compiled all of Morris's greatest hits for us. Yeah, I mean, I'm just <laughs> looking at this now. Like, this isn't just an aging old man sliding into simmering bitterness and racism typical of many elderly Brits. That's right, just condemn them all. Mm. Uh, since the start of his career, Morrissey has been outspoken against multiculturalism and immigration, citing his fears of a threatened English identity. So he's right. been on the money long before the rest of us. Right. Right, okay. The, these songs at the top here, that uh, it talk, Bengali and pra- platforms, uh, England for the English, which is a lyric from uh, his song, The National Front Disco, and, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Asian Rut, all of these songs came out from 1990, sorry, 1988 Jesus. to about 1992. So they're before Blair, yeah. before mass immigration. Yeah. Yeah. And wh- yeah, I won't go too much into what he's saying in each song, but the point is that he is documenting through his mu- music the fact that there is existing now ethnic tensions Right, Sorry, in it. just reading. Comments. It's great, honestly. I knew you'd enjoy. Well, this. when you look at Enoch Powell, it's back in the sixties. Yeah. So yeah. 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 He, I, I love the way he kind of sounds like academic agent, right? Morrissey famously said, "All reggae is vile." It's like, yeah, that sounds like an AA tweet. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I did. Sorry, I might have been a bit of a. Yeah. How do I scroll this it's, one? It's alright. Oh, thank you. Is on that screen then. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, I got here. Um, So on immigration, this is just further in this piece. Uh, In the early 2000s, Morrissey publicly lamented that England is a memory now. The gates are flooded. Uh, In language reminiscent of Goebbels, he moaned on, travel to England and you have no idea where you are. Uh, Some parts that is definitely true. Right. John Cleese, Goebbels, Morrissey. Yeah. (laughs) They're yeah. basically the same, same guy. party. Yeah. Same party. Basically the same guy. Yeah. yeah. All of them in like the Predator handshake. London is an English city. <laughs> yes. You know? uh, this one just is, honestly, it's one of his most tame ones, but just on Sadiq Khan, London is debased. The London of May, uh, Mayor of London tells us about neighbourhood policing. What is policing? He tells us London is an amazing city. What's amazing? This is the Mayor of London and he cannot talk properly. I saw an interview where he was discussing mental health and he repeatedly said mental. He could not say the words mental health. The mayor of London, civilization is over. I just want Morrissey to be put on TV. <laughs> yeah, when, yeah. when we win, Morrissey gets his own half hour BBC segment every Sunday. Yeah. Where he Making, gets to say whatever he likes. <laughs> Making minister without portfolio. Yeah. In the yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Um, I mean, there's other stuff in here as well where they, they talk about, you know, because obviously his, his militant uh, animal rights advocacy and stuff, but that's made him a very outspoken critic of kosher and halal meat and sauce yeah. and all those sorts of things as well. But just, just a quick thing as well. All of this is just essentially the traditional English attitude. Yes. Yeah. All just completely, because I mean, like someone would say, ah, oh, right, you're, you're a member of Peter. No, I bet he hates Peter. You know, it's just a traditional English love of our pets and our animals. You know, there's nothing because I mean, like one thing I can't stand is watching videos coming out of China or something, and seeing them treat animals in the way they do. I hate it. That's why Morrissey called the Chinese a subspecies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that. Um, I don't endorse everything he said, but it's, I can see the impulse. Where right. It's from. Yeah. Yes. Now all his views are just actually normal English views, reasonable views. Yeah. Right. They're the views of a person who doesn't want their entire culture and heritage and country annihilated around them yeah that's all it is yeah what a big ask yeah, eh? yeah. Uh, <laughs> if it's not too much i know <laughs> all right Morrissey, calm down. um this was the last bit i took because just for the sheer deliciousness of, of you you can tell the person hated writing this yeah. that as a father of manchester heralded by anglophiles around the world morris's views have a huge impact i love this as such an immediate contradiction Manchester is famously multicultural, cosmopolitan, and has thrived as a result. It has seen violent attacks by Islamist extremists and far-right terrorists. Oh, it sounds it like is, things are going great. It has faced rising levels of poverty. It has become the gay capital of Britain. It has welcomed refugees and asylum seekers. Hundreds have arrived and left, including Morrissey. So, but you just said it was brilliant and multicultural and It's violent. thriving, which it's is why... Why it's, yeah. 
Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. The, I didn't add it in here, but the demographics of Manchester currently as well as it's 48% British. Uh, obviously, back when Morrissey was born there in 59, I suspect it was quite different. Yeah, it says uh, Manchester's famously multicultural and cosmopol cosmopolitan. Only in the last couple of decades because it's been forced that way. Yeah, because it's only black. Never used to be at all. No. You can go back and look at footage, not even from the 50s, yeah, yeah, yeah. From like the 70s. Well, yeah. just the 80s and 90s, I bet it was still yeah, mostly. Mostly, largely. England. Yeah. Largely, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, he says... Uh, British cities have become... In fact, it's fine. I won't carry on with that. It's just more whinging. But yeah, I, I just thought that... Oh, and then I just thought we'd get some words from the man himself uh, just for a little Let's bit. Because... Them. Now, the labels are quite bloodless. They will just get rid of you if you say anything that they don't agree with. They're they, not interested. They won't see you through the journey anymore. Really. No, 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 they're not interested. They're not. No. And that's, you know, the, now they talk all about, oh, we must have diversity, 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 which is pe diversity is people that you don't know. And mm -hmm. it just means, it's just another word for conformity. It's yeah. the new way of saying conformity, diversity. You don't see anything diverse anywhere. No. It's all conformity. It's having the opposite effect, in fact, isn't it? It is, because when people talk about diversity, they don't think about the great things that we don't have in common. Mm -hmm. And those things are ignored. And they always made countries very interesting because you could travel to Germany, you could see the most incredible culture. You go to Italy, you see the most incredible culture. Now they just want everything to be the same, the same, the same. Yeah. So diversity means conformity. It doesn't mean let's, it doesn't mean avant-garde or let's mm -hmm. make really interesting, strange art. It means box everybody yeah diversity i think is it's a dying, dreadful yeah. word mm. pin it to anything and that situation is finished mm -hmm. it's a terrible yeah that right there superb yeah he's wrong he's not wrong it's in any way shape or form it's, yeah. it's it is a it's a it's a way of saying i agree with the homogenous overculture mm. that's all it is yeah so, uh, there's you know there's nothing uh, like nothing avant-garde about it mm. of course diversity just means less nativeness yes doesn't it it's not about actual diversity decentralized truly yeah. diversity yeah the word has been completely co-opted and corrupted yeah, it's nothing to do with actual diversity it's, a, it's an ideological signifier now yeah, yeah. Br Br the british isles before mass immigration were diverse in the english and scots the irish and the welsh right that is was our form of diversity I mean, they want multiculturalism but not our culture right our culture isn't part of that multiculture you, you, you saw this when they, uh, there, there was some fashion magazine shoot and it was heralded as the most diverse one ever. It was just all black women. Mm. So, but that's monoculture. I've seen that a number yeah. of times, a number right. of different that's faces. Not, that's... Diversity is one and there's no white faces. Well, it's, there's not even any like other like people around the world it's just here's a bunch of african women it's like that's not that's, that's the opposite <laughs> yeah. of a diversity i mean if it was just white women or asian women or something like yeah that's not diverse either no. you know but anyway there's no point getting into it it's obviously sure. just a lie uh, and anyway yeah but i thought we'd just yeah close with those words from the man himself and yeah so i would but i would just take the opportunity to be vocal uh for morrissey because it's important actually that this album bond viral teenagers uh, does get put on shelves. It's important that the memory of those children is kept alive, that we do look back in anger and we don't settle for what the government intends for us. And yeah, Morris is very much at the head of that in his own way. I hope you appreciated that segment from the podcast to the Lotus Eaters. And if you want to see what else we're doing, you can follow Connor's series, Tomlinson Talks, where he talks about the Reform Party Conference. And if you want to see all the other things we're putting out, you can follow us on Twitter. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye. Mm -hmm.